Let's seal the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to talk sports, football to be precise. The Flamingos, after a narrow defeat against Germany in their FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup opener. The girls have been urged to put their defeat to Germany behind them and go all out for a three points when they take the pitch against New Zealand counterparts today at the uh, Under-17 Women's World Cup in India. And so it is a make or mark for the Nigerian uh, Flamingos and the New Zealand today as a win for one would see the exit of the other from the game. We have Monday Thomas joining the conversation this morning. Monday, it's good to have you join us. Good morning, Mercy. Hope you're having a fantastic time. Definitely. Let's get straight to the crux of the matter. What would you make of the opener for the Flamingos? Do you think it's a case of lack of confidence or as an issue of defense? How would you describe, you know, that game? The first 45 minutes was uh, quite impressive. I didn't expect that from the girls, but they were in all departments. Uh, they were very strong and very solid. And they even went ahead to score the Germans first. A, a, a brilliant strike from the free kick uh, by Miracle Osani. That was world class. And I think they had a great time in the first 45 minutes. But, you know, football is a game of two halves. It can favor you in the first half and favor the opponent in the second half. And that was the case uh, right there for the German side. The second 45 minutes, whatever even the coach told them in the locker room certainly worked out in the second 45 minutes. Uh, the Germans were able to score two quick goals, two quick goals, one in the 59 minutes and the other in the 61st minute to see them beat the Flamingos, who had a brilliant game, if you ask me. Even when they, they went down by two goals to one, they were still putting in the fight, hoping that they could equalize some tactical substitutions there by the coach, uh, Bankole Oluokere, who I'm, I'm very very, I mean, I'm very confident in that I, I trust him because of how he qualified the, the ladies to this particular uh, cup, World Cup. I mean, having a, a great run of form in the qualifiers, dominating African football, and also having a very fair, fair outing in Turkey uh, for their 10-day training. So a lot is expected from them. And uh, like today's game, uh, yes, a lot is expected from them. And I actually spoke with the one of the number nines, uh, Alvin Dasu, and she's saying that she's expecting to uh, just uh, let the pass be the pass, let uh, that, that defeat uh, just uh, get behind them, and they'll be looking to uh, get... Uh, a win today. Just like you said, it's going to be a make or mark for the Flamingos. And I must let you know that uh, the Flamingos uh, have not won any of their last five games at the Under-17 World Cup. A streak that is uh, stretching back to a 3 0 defeat in the quarterfinals in the fourth edition way back in 2014. Their last victory came in the group stages of the 2014 3-0 uh, thumping over Mexico. And since then, they have scored just one goal in their last in the last edition, which was in 2016. They didn't score a goal. Uh, they didn't score a single goal in that particular one. And their best result was a nil-nil draw against uh, England way back in uh, uh, 2016. So what I'm trying to say is that the Flamingos uh, in the World Cup or at the World Cup, they've not had that brilliant form, but. By the way they qualified, by the football they played against Germany, who we know that Germany were going to be their toughest opponent. So a 2-1 finish was not so bad against a German side that many people were expecting that the Flamengos will maybe go down by three goals to nil or four goals to nil. But the ladies were able to put up a great performance and saw them still lose that particular game. But the, the, the margin which, were, uh, which they lost was... Uh, Still very impressive for me. And against the New Zealand side, who lost their first game to Chile by three goals to one. So I think Nigeria, the Flamingos, will just age past this particular so, so, one. I mean, I'm seeing a narrow victory for the Flamingos. Maybe one uh, just more, just before one. we get to the Flamingos uh, with New Zealand, because uh, as much as we would say that, yes, this is Africa's you know best team putting out right there in Nigeria, uh, you can also agree with me that New Zealand is also not a walk in the park just as Germany, they also had not to crack. But um, like I asked you earlier on, what do you think the problem lies? Do you think it's, it's an issue of confidence, especially when you talk about, you know, the exposure and playing with, you know, a team as Germany and uh, or where the problem is on the defense? I mean, you can say that the problem with the Flamingos uh, losing to Germany was on our defense. 
No, it was it was just football happening. I mean, I think uh, the the main the main uh, issue right there for the uh, Flamingos uh, they were overconfident after seeing that in the first forty five minutes the Germans were not what people tell, told them about. So they had a fantastic first half. They scored first, and they grew. And uh, I think they were overconfident to that they they would get all three points against the Germans. But you know, the Germans had all the plans. So it's not a case of uh, not having confidence. It's not a case of. Uh, not having a, a quality defense because at all departments, I think Banco Lalu Curry's girls were top notch, but they just I, I lacked that consistency to see off the game. So they became complacent in the late uh, minutes of that game, especially from the 59 minutes where they considered the first goal. And you know, in, in a football game, when you score a goal, you get to build from from there. You get to have momentum to go for the, for the order, and that's what the Egyptians, uh, the Germans did. They scored the first goal, they had momentum, and they went ahead for the second one, and that's how they were able to beat the Flamingos. The ladies are confident. The ladies, they know how to play football, and they are ready to play football. A lot of persons have actually queried whether or not, you know, the Flamingos uh, are really a material for the World Cup. And so I'm asking, do you see an exit? Do you think that this is just going to be an exit uh, falling out of the game today? Well, uh, there is no exit. The super, uh, the flamingos are still in this. They are still in this. I, I told you that you made mention of uh, New Zealand, who are not uh, clearly a work in the park. I will agree with you because for you to play at the World Cup, it means you did something great in your continent, in the Oceanic and the Asian continent. It means you you did well. That's why you qualified to the World Cup. So the New Zealand are not going to be any workover. But I think the flamingos has got what it takes to age past them and. Uh, get their first victory and see how they can, of course, get a draw or another victory against the Chileans to see them qualify to the knockout stages of the Under-17 World Cup. Well, so if you, if you had the chance to be the coach of the Flamingos for just, you know, a day, uh, what, what would you be looking at? What exactly would you be putting the team through? Monday, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, mercy. I can hear you now. All right, so I'm asking that if you had a chance to be the coach or to coach the Flamingos for just a day, what exactly uh, would you be telling them to look at? What, what would be your strategy? What exactly would you be doing to get us you know, to that point, not to fall out of the game, especially on this day? Well, Mercy, I can't be a coach. I don't think I'll ever want to be a coach in the I'm in just my, saying, the let's, let's assume. Why? Let's assume because you're... I trust, because I trust Bancole. I trust Bancole, coach. Bancole is a world-class coach. So I think he, he's doing exactly what I'll be doing. He's do, doing exactly what I'll be doing right now with the girls. I mean, I'm, I, I was impressed. I mean, I wouldn't quickly uh, or I wouldn't completely judge them for losing against the German side. The German side clearly were the toughest opponent. And like I said, people were expecting the Flamingos to lose by maybe a three-goal match in, but they lost by two goals to one. So there is a lot of positive we can take out of that game. Bankole Oluokere is a world-class manager. And whatever he's doing right now is... Uh, Monday, Thomas, you're not, you're not even getting the question. No one is in doubt about the positive of the game. I'm just saying, as much as you'd say that was a fantastic play, whether or not we actually uh, lost out narrowly uh, to Germany, but you can also say that you're putting your best man out there in the continent and then you're losing out. It doesn't also add up. So I'm saying... What are the lacunas? What exactly have you seen? What can be done to improve the game? Let's assume the girls are listening. And let's just even say you are in the position to fix one or two. As fantastic as the coach may be. All right. So uh, if, I'm, if I'm saying that uh, I would do better than the coach and this is what the coach is, is not doing and this is what I'll probably do, that is uh, just like saying that the coach is not, um, is not fit for this uh, particular job. And, and I wouldn't want to see that. So what I'm saying is that I get I, I got your question clearly. I got your question clearly. Now, I've been with the girls. I've followed them uh, since their qualifying series before the World Cup and uh, before traveling to Turkey. These ladies have been brilliant. The coach is very vocal. The, the coach always tries to in, instill confidence in them. And this is what I will do as well as a coach. And also the tactics on the pitch of play is a top notch with the coach. So I don't see any loophole. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't see any loophole. I don't see anything I would do better with the girls that the coach is not getting it done right now. That's what I was trying to tell you. 
Oh, well, so I think that you're trying to just be politically correct, especially when it feels like you're a major fan of, uh, you know, Bankole. The truth is you can never have uh, a system where you have absolutes. You're not absolutes. You're relative. So as much as the system might just be perfect and a coach, there might just feel be, you know, one or two, you know, to put out there. But however, we're wishing the girls, you know, a great outing today. But quickly, uh, just before we course it down, it would just be on a lighter note. We saw at Old Trafford, Francis Zoho, a world-class goalkeeper, and we saw the fact that he faced 34 shots, conceding one goal, making 12 saves, and nine of them inside the box. And so uh, what happens, because over time we see that our players uh, get to do better when they're outside of the Nigerian league, but when they come to play at home, it's a different thing. What exactly can we do? What magic can we perform for uh, Francis to actually have a performance as this for us? All right, first of all, Francis needs to work on himself more. I mean, that was a brilliant, brilliant performance. I mean, world-class goalkeeping display at the Old Trafford. It, it was there for everyone to see that oh, it's got what it takes to be a, a world-class goalkeeper. And great, great one for the young star who is going to be 24 in the next 14, uh, 14 days from now. He had a brilliant time at the Old Trafford. And the question is, can he continue this particular form to see how we can also help the Super Eagles goal cup, uh, goalkeeping problems? And now, what he needs to do right now is to just be consistent. And I think if the coaches right there in Amon and Nicosia can have so much faith in him to make him the number one goalkeeper to see him playing week in, week out. Because some people might say he might just have been a stroke of love for... Um, for Francis Ozor, you know, every footballer, every goalkeeper, everybody in sport to know that there are some days that just come in favor of them. And there are some really bad days. And for you to get rid of the bad days frequently, you need to put in more work. You need to be more consistent. You need to be the number one goalkeeper. You need to be a goalkeeper that is playing week in, week out. Because football is, uh, you're as good as your last game. So if you keep on playing, if, if he becomes the number one goalkeeper of Amon and Nicosia, uh, the number one goalkeeper was not fit to stand for the Seaport side. And uh, that's why Francis Ozor was uh, in goal against his boyhood club, Manchester United. And uh, I, I think he just needs to play more. He just needs to become the number one goalkeeper for Mona Nicosia because the Super Eagles, the stakes are very high and there are high demands right there. I don't know. It's quite disappointing that our goalkeepers right now are not number ones in their respective clubs. If we take a look at the Senegalese, uh, the Senegalese uh, goalkeeper, uh, Edward Mendy, he's maybe no longer the number one goalkeeper for Chelsea, but for last season and for the start of this season, he was the number one goalkeeper for big countries. Their number one goalkeepers are also number one in their respective clubs. Uh, Monday. So for Francis Ozor, yeah. all right. Go, just Can drop your thoughts. Up? Go ahead. So for, so for Francis Ozor to be a number one goalkeeper, not just a number one goalkeeper, but a reliable number one, he needs to be the number one of Amona Nicosia. So first thing first, he needs to get to that number one shirt of Amona Nicosia, and then we'll see how we can contribute this brilliant performance the same way he did at the Old Trafford for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Oh, well, it didn't quite really sound like uh, you were proud of what he did. Uh, anyways, oh, wow. I, I, th I, th no, I, I think you took it too serious now. Monday, we're just trying to just tease uh, Monday, uh, Francis, at this point, but that's fine. Uh, just before we go quickly, I'd like you to, you know, tip for the Flamingos. What, what scores, score lines are we looking at? It's going to be a narrow victory for the Flamingos. I'm um, seeing a 1 0 victory or a 2 1 victory in favor of Nigeria. All right, then. Uh, fingers across. Let's see how that pans out. Uh, this game would actually be played uh, this afternoon. I, I really don't know what time it will be transmitted to uh, the sort of part of the world. Uh, talking about West it's Africa. It's noon Nigerian time. Okay. 12 p.m. Noon Nigerian time. Uh, we will be looking at the match and let's see uh, what happens and how the girls who make Nigeria pl proud uh, were very uh, here cheering for them and supporting and we wish them the very best. Thank you so much, Monday Thomas, for being part of the show. He is a sports analyst. Uh, he joins us all the way from Aquibum State. Thank you. We appreciate your time, and we look forward to sharing your thoughts some other time. It's That's always a pleasure talking sports with you, Mercy. I mean, you're always acting really, really... Uh
<laughs> really interesting questions, and I try to answer it, answer them in them in the safe possible way. Bankole is still my number one, and I'll stick with him. <laughs> I understand the bias, and that's fine. Uh, that's the much we can take at this point on the breakfast. If you missed out on it, it's okay to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. And that's it. My name is Messi Boko. Have a fantastic Friday.